now I'd like to just say a few words, if I could, with the family. And, uh, and to Doug, Doug Fournette's extended family. His son, Bill, his daughter-in-law, Christy, uh, to David and Marilyn Grissett, and to Doug's brothers, Rock and Kevin. Please know that all of those who are gathered here today, all these folks that you see gathered around us with you, are, want to gather and thank you for your sacrifice <clears throat> to our country. Uh, what you have done and your support through the years and, and what you have gone through uh, is certainly a personal sacrifice as well. And we appreciate uh, you being here this morning. We appreciate uh, all that you have done uh, for our country and our community. It is our prayer that this day will be what you have hoped it to be. Now, especially to his grandsons, Douglas, David, John, thank you for helping with the Pledge of Allegiance this morning. That was very appropriate for you to be here and to be participating in this ceremony. You also need to know, you also need to know that your grandfather was more than just a military hero to this community. He was loved and admired by all who knew him. He grew up as an all-American boy. He was the best in the best sense of the word. It's been over 50 years, I know it's hard for you to imagine this at your age, but it's been over 50 years since he graduated from high school. And yet, because of the type of young man that he was, the type of friend that he was, and what he did, and how he uh, interacted with his classmates, many of them are here today, and they also participated in helping to raise money for this program. So as young men, it's obvious from your role and what you're doing in scouting, as I see the merit badges reflected, I know you're pursuing the Eagle Scout. I know that your grandfather would be very, very proud of you, and we are very proud of you as well. And thank you for being with us this morning and helping to make this event so special. I am honored to be here this morning to speak at the dedication of the First Lieutenant Douglas B. Barnett Memorial Statue. But I'm humble with the challenge to come up with words appropriate for the occasion. I'm glad that in many ways the statue speaks for itself, which is indeed a blessing, because no simple word from me can do justice to the life and legacy of Douglas Barnett. While no words will ever be fully worthy of his service, nor any honor truly befitting his sacrifice, let us remember that it is never too late to pay tribute to one who answered the call of duty with courage and valor to one who left his family to serve bravely, a world away from everything he knew and everyone he loved. And so it was on that day, in that faraway place, that this true hero placed the lives of his men ahead of his own. And so it is here this morning, some 45 years later, we come together on the shores of this beautiful lake to remember and celebrate the local war hero and dedicate this bronze statue in his honor and memory. We come together to dedicate to the citizens of Lake Charles and the surrounding area the form and semblance of one of their very own, to one whom they dearly loved in life and whose memory they can never forget, a son, a brother, a loving husband, a soon-to-be father, a friend to all he met, who those many years ago yielded up his life a war hero because of his love of his country and his love of his fellow men. One of those service buddies or friends that experienced Doug firsthand. I first met Doug in officer candidate school at Fort Benning, Georgia. While we were people who came from different worlds, he from the Deep South and me from New Jersey, <laughs> We became good friends as we were both in the same platoon together and we sh shared a wide range of training experiences. Upon the graduation, we went to ranger school together and he was my ranger buddy until that injury sidelined him and he was recycled into a later class. While our paths went separate ways after that, we were reunited in Panama as we trained and as we traveled together to Vietnam on the same chartered plane from California. We ended up in different parts of South Vietnam and served in different combat units. We all arrived in country during the most intense period of the war, and as infantry platoon leaders, 
we were really engaged in serious combat operations. As we remember Doug today, it is fitting for us to see him for who he really was. Doug was special because he was real in many ways. He was both profound and base. He was not pretentious, but he was very basic as he approached life and its challenges. He was smart, clever, with creative solutions to problems. He always had a high energy level, and at times his spontaneous nature was both a blessing and a curse. His personality was infectious with its spark and zest, and therefore he attracted others to him. He liked fun, faced life with a smile, and had a great sense of humor. He was a born leader who was quick to pull others together for solution and then to accept responsibility for the decision. He was hardworking, took few shortcuts, and achieved excellence in whatever he did. In short, he was a good guy. For conspicuous gallantry, intrepidity, and action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, First Lieutenant Infantry Fournette distinguished, distinguished himself in action while serving as rifle platoon leader of the second platoon, Company B, while advancing uphill against fortified enemy positions in the Ashaw Valley, the platoon encountered intense sniper fire, making movement very difficult. The right flank man suddenly discovered an enemy claymore mine covering the route of advance and shouted a warning to his comrades. Realizing that the enemy would also be alerted, First Lieutenant Fournette ordered his men to take cover and ran uphill toward the mine, drawing a sheath knife as he, as he approached it. With complete disregard for his safety and realizing the imminent danger to members of his command, he used his body as a shield in front of the mine as he attempted to slash the control wires leading from the enemy, leading from the enemy position to the mine. As he reached for the wire, the mine was detonated, killing him instantly. Five men nearest the mine were slightly wounded, but First Lieutenant Fournette's heroic and unselfish act spared his men of serious injury or death. His gallantry and willing sacrifice are in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflect, reflect great credit upon him, his unit, and the United States Army. Thank you very much. Words cannot express the gratitude our family has for all of you. So I sought the help of others who are far better writers than I. To my fathers, brothers, and arms, as well as all who have served to protect our, our country. The playwright William Shakespeare and Henry V said it best, we few, we band of brothers, for he who sheds his blood with me shall always be my brother. And to all who may visit this place today and in the future, I'm also going to call on our former president and World War II veteran John Fitzgerald Kennedy. As we express our gratitude we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Thank you all. Thank you, Lake Charles.